I want to show you all something that I think will give me some insight into these king oysters, but it was actually a goof up on my part. You see these bags here that are uncased and have a whole bunch of king oyster pins forming on them. I actually was planning on making those uh, lion's mane, but uh, somehow I screwed up and mislabeled a liquid culture jar or something. I'm not sure what I did, but yeah, the first bags of spawn I made weren't lion's mane spawn, they were king oyster spawn. Which I, I still ha have some bags that actually are lion's mane, and had I, had I been recent in doing it, I would have realized the difference of how it looks and how it grows. But it's been a while, but I do have some lion's mane spawn going, so I'll have some videos on that soon. But anyhow, what I would normally do with the lion's mane is leave the bags intact and just cut a couple small holes, and the mushroom would fruit out the, the size of the bag much better than a king oyster would. But you can see here I've, of course, cut the small holes and, of course, have king oysters growing through it. But the interesting thing was that these bags were made on 6-8, and I have some other bags that were actually made on the same day that I knew that were king oysters, made on 6-8, if you remember. And these bags didn't have hardly any pins growing around it, no really stimulation when I opened up. However, the bags that I cut the slits in seem to simulate pin formation all over the top, including all the mycelium that was growing on the sides here was just loaded with pins as well. So it makes me wonder if that's a, some other technique I could do where you cut a small slit in the side of the bag just to get things going um, and let it, the pin start getting on the top because it, it pinned on top before it ever pinned around the outside of the bag. And then maybe just tape the hole up so it doesn't uh, pin so much off the side. Um, I'm going to let these go without casing them. I did case one just to see how it would do. Um, but it's holding moisture well with that much plastic up on top and with uh, kind of it sunken down there an inch, the, uh, it's not evaporating too badly. So it'll be interesting to see how that does. We know before that growing them off the side definitely didn't work. But that could be too that uh, when you're growing off the side, you don't have an area of high moisture, like a, a, a sinking well of water and moisture for the pins to develop well, so we'll see how this does. Another goof up I did too was that uh, I have one of my friends that does some of this work for me that I forgot to put some water in the pressure cooker, you know, very bad situation. But fortunately it was on one of my electric burners and it actually ran the full cycle with, uh, without fully coming up to 15 PSI. That's how you can tell you got a problem it doesn't completely come up to that. And so I only pressure cooked them for about an hour and uh, at a lower PSI, but they're colonizing pretty good upstairs. So I might actually eventually lower the time required to uh, sterilize this stuff. I'm gonna do some experiments, but if I get the time to just an hour instead of two hours, that, that greatly, uh, increases my work efficiency because then maybe I can actually do two batches in a day. So we're going to check all this out. Still waiting on these to pin and we'll see it in a few days. It's been a few days and you can see a decent amount of pinning right on the top. Now you can also tell that I'm still getting quite a bit of pinning anywhere there's an open cavity of air along the bag. Now something too that might correct that is if uh, I only put four of these bags per shelf and only four per shelf when I colonize them and really just uh, shook the bag back and forth to settle it all to fill every uh, gap. So I might try that in a couple bags to see how that does but then you know I'm losing quite a bit of uh, space to fruit from. So I'm only getting four per shelf then. So, but you know, if it works out better, then I might look into it. Um, as far as the age of what I put the down here, uh, the ones I got earlier seem to be doing about the same rate as the others. And the ones that were old, older, uh, really about the same too. Now, if you remember these ones that I didn't case, they, of course, have a ton of pins. You can see here it's just 
full of pins off the side. And notice too, there's definitely a correlation between this one that you don't see a whole lot of mushrooms growing off the top or even out the holes that I cut. This one doesn't even have any coming out. A lot of pinning though going nowhere while the some of these that are doing better like this one has uh, a bit less going on around it but uh, I mean still that's not bad for encased. I have, I have noticed that really isn't any water pooling up in it um, so it really might not be a bad option to do these uncased with just some extra plastic on the side and it's still wiped off wipe off the excess mycelium off the side of the bag and uh, do it like that but you can tell I'm still not getting great results off some of them so still some inconsistency even with this one that I did case something too that I think I might try is using those same blue bins and putting four of these blocks per bin taking the plastic completely off of the block and then kind of packing uh, the casing mix around the entire thing um, making it all level and that way it'd be impossible for light to uh, penetrate to the outside of the bag to stimulate all this extra pinning. The only other option would be to, to use uh, black bags or tape the bags up with black tape of some sort but then again I don't think anybody that I know sells black grow bags at least for any kind of decent price um, so I'm willing to try some different things so we're going to check in again and see how these do when they're finishing up. So while reading what is known as the Mushroom Bible, which if you don't know, that would be the Growing Gourmet and Medicinal Mushrooms by Paul Stamets. I recommend anybody that's interested in growing mushrooms to get that book. But while reading through it, I noticed that in the comments section of the King Oysters, it talks about how he feels that a casing layer is not necessary with these but he does admit that many of the uh, other growers that he's talked to uh, do say a casing layer helps and obviously you know we've seen uh, how it's been fitted with uh, a lot of my blocks but you know still inconsistent so I kind of thought well you know maybe there is a good way to do this without a casing layer and to solve some of these problems that we've been having with uh, all the extra pinning that is kind of stealing from our yields if you remember all this stuff like right here, we don't want that. These are some of the other the last blocks I made with a thin layer on top and then pack it through. You can see how bad it still is. Um, and even the, with the ones packed through, I'm still giving some problems because it's just so hard to get the casing mix deep down in there to uh, fill all the space. But what we can do is crumble the sawdust up, pack it in, and then it fills up all the space completely. Using these uh, dark blue tubs, it's gonna cut all the light out too, off the side. So no light, no extra space, uh, will ultimately reduce the uh, pins that form against the side of the tub. And hopefully we'll have nothing but mushrooms that wanna go up at the top, so. But uh, this bin right here, actually I put six bags worth in which I think I overfilled because uh, even though it would be equivalent to 12 bags per shelf instead of 10 bags like I'm using now I think the mushrooms would probably grow too tall and bump up against the uh, uh, top of the shelf above it so I think I'm going to reduce it just to five bags uh, in one of these bins two bins per shelf so the same 10 bags per shelf total so you can see what I've done here is I stripped the bag off four of these blocks that were completely colonized. Make sure the, the bottoms of these are well colonized too. I've actually had to uh, scale back my water I was using. I was using a little too much water because um, I was trying to see how much I could push it. And it gave me a lot of problems with water, at, at, well, too wet of sawdust at the very bottom of the bag, which didn't colonize well, and I'd have to break the... Uh, everything up and remix it and then also too I had the problem if you remember with the uh, pressure cooker water getting in there uh, but you know I saw that with jars in the bottoms but you see right here I have four of the blocks already sitting in there with the top up 
And I'm going to go ahead and take this fifth block. I'm just going to cut the top off of it, not completely, but then make a, a cut down the side, peel it back. You see it's nice and exposed. Now, the tops of these blocks, the mycelium, has already gotten a lot of the uh, triggers for pinning, so we don't want to just break this block up and then pack it in the holes around the top. We want to bust everything on the top up, get it so it's, uh, well, regrow and re basically reset the, uh, the, the pinning triggers so that now we can get a nice even flush just on the top. So I'm going to sanitize my hands again. Make sure your hands are decently dry before you uh, grab the mycelium, otherwise it'll damage it. I'm just going to reach in here and crush up the top. Breaks apart a lot easier than you'd think. And then I'll take this block and I'm going to crush it up as well with my hands. And then we're going to pack it in pretty decently, not real hard. You probably could, though, pack it in and tamp it down pretty hard because the water's not going to really squeeze out because it's fully colonized. And I know some mushroom farms will actually uh, use a hydraulic press to press their substrate, probably mostly straw for uh, butt mushroom farms and compress it into blocks that are real tightly compacted. We don't want any air spaces. Any, any big chunks at the top, you can break up some more. And then kind of even it all out. And tamp it back down with your hands. It's okay if it's a little bit uneven. You kind of want that because that's going to increase the surface area, which will help with increasing the amount of humidity that will make and uh, surface area for more pins to form. So that's good. Now I'm not going to miss this or anything. It already has plenty of moisture. I'm just going to set it on the shelf and rinse the slit off. And then very loosely just lay it on there. You want it to be pretty darn loose so it can breathe well. I'll just wait for two days and come check that out. Um, this one obviously will start pinning first, but we'll take a look at it again and when the pins are coming off this. And also, too, we'll see how these ones at the very end that I made first with the uh, tightly pressed casing mix, see how they do when they get done.